Christmas University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello, tonight is the last first round match in this festive competition in which teams of distinguished alumni show us that they know just about as much as the UK's brightest students, even if the act of remembering takes a tad longer. Out of 14 teams who bravely dared to take part, St John's College Oxford and the Universities of Manchester and Loughborough are definitely through to the semi-finals, and if tonight's winners can score 155 or more, they're guaranteed to go through too. Now, the first player for New College Oxford is the gardening correspondent for The New Yorker, but she's principally known as a novelist with works that have been long-listed for the Booker Prize and the Women's Prize for Fiction, shortlisted for the Orange Prize, and which have won the Somerset Maugham Award and the John Llewellyn Reese Prize. Of their next player, it's been said that politicians dread more than anything being told that he's waiting for them in reception. In a career spanning more than 40 years, he's been a founding member of Channel 4 News, worked on Panorama, and was the political editor of Newsnight before rejoining Channel 4. He's won several RTS awards, and in 2018, he won the prestigious Charles Wheeler Award. Their captain is an award-winning documentary filmmaker and presenter, a National Geographic explorer, and a New York Times best-selling author of books, including The Unexpected Truth About Animals, and she has a particular interest in sloths, being both a leading expert in their behavior and the founder of the Sloth Appreciation Society, with the motto, the slow shall inherit the earth. <laughs> Their final team member is a writer and film director. His play, When Did You Last See My Mother, is believed to have made him the youngest writer of the modern era to have a play performed in the West End. His stage adaptation of Laclos' Les Liaisons Dangereuses opened in 1985, and he won an Oscar for the screenplay of the film version three years later. He was nominated in the same category in 2007 for his adaptation of Ian McEwan's Atonement, and in 2020, he received a knighthood. Let's meet the new College Oxford team. Hello, I'm Charlotte Mendelssohn. I graduated in Ancient and Modern History in 1994, and I'm a novelist. My name's Michael Crick. I graduated in Philosophy, Politics and Economics in 1979. In my time in broadcasting, I spent 20 years on news night, so I'm used to difficult questions from uh, Mr. Paxman. I also write books, mainly biographies of politicians. This is their captain. Hello, I'm Lucy Cook. I graduated from New College in 1991 with a degree in zoology, and now I write books and make films and I'm a broadcaster. Hello, I'm Christopher Hampton. I graduated in French and German uh, in 1968, and I'm a playwright. Now, fleas are a very big deal for the first player for the University of Reading. She's an expert on them and has written books on them. Her work sees her undertake forensic casework for many police forces throughout the UK, using insect evidence in post-mortems to help solve murder cases. Their next team member has worked as a film and television critic for nine years, beginning her career while still at university at BBC Radio 1 and 1 Extra as their in-house film critic. She's now freelance, contributing to numerous outlets and has a weekly review slot on BBC Six Music's Breakfast Show. Their captain is the culture correspondent for Newsnight, and he's also written and presented arts documentaries for BBC Four, including How to Get Ahead, about the relationship between art and royal courts, and sex and sensibility, about the allure of Art Nouveau. Before that, he was a correspondent for Channel 4 News, and he's the author of four non-fiction books, including a travel book about Cuba and an exploration of underground London. Their fourth player began his career as an art director before becoming a graphic designer and consultant for publications including Harper's Bazaar, GQ and The Observer. He's worked with Peter Saville on design projects as diverse as Givenchy and the England football kit. And he's designed the typefaces for the National Trust and for The Guardian, with the latter naming him one of the 50 best designers in Britain. Let's meet the Reading team. 
I'm Amaret. I graduated with a BSc in zoology from Reading in 1997. I'm now a senior lecturer in forensic investigation at the University of Winchester. I'm a scientific associate at the Natural History Museum and I am a consultant forensic entomologist. Hi, I'm Rihanna. I studied English literature with film and theatre studies at Reading, graduated in 2011, and I was alumnus of the year in 2013, and I am a film and TV critic. And this is their captain. Hello, I'm Stephen Smith. Uh, I studied politics and economics, at least some of the time, and I contribute to Newsnight, another programme on this channel that can be a difficult watch. Hello, I'm Paul Barnes. I graduated in typography and graphic communication in 1992, and I'm a type designer. OK, put your fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. In the early 17th century, which poet wrote, This is the month, and this the happy morn, wherein the son of heaven's eternal king, a wedded maid and virgin mother born? The lines open his poem on the morning of Christ's nativity. New College Mendelssohn. John Dunn. No. Anyone want to buzz from Reading? You may not confer one of you. Reading Barnes. Milton. It is John Milton, you're right. <laughs> Your bonuses are on shorter words that can be made using any of the nine letters of the word midwinter. In each case, give the word from the definition. Firstly, a seven letter adjective meaning temporary or provisional, usually until a permanent decision is made. Anyone? So, uh... Pending. No, there's no P in midwinter, is there? That's true. <laughs> Depends on the temperature. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's interim. Secondly, an adjective meaning unearthly, uncanny or peculiar. It appears in the name of a pioneering magazine that published unusual fiction from 1922. No. It's got to have a W in, hasn't it? Maybe creepy weird. Creepy weird. weird. <laughs> I can only think of fourteen times, but that doesn't sound right either, Jeremy. No, it isn't right. No. Weird would have been right. Okay. We, as in weird tales, but I'm not going to give you the points because you gave two words: weird and creepy. <laughs> and a noun finally denoting a representative assembly used nowadays in connection with Japan and formerly of Germany. What's the question? <laughs> um, Come on. I didn't actually understand the question. <laughs> You're not Can you repeat, repeat the it, question? Are you, are you allowed no, to? I can't repeat the question. <laughs> it is Christmas. It's diet. It oh, diet. <laughs> Fine. Now, ten points for this. European, Chinese and American are three species of which deciduous tree of the genus Castanea? The European species prize for the edible nuts within its prickly... New college cook. Chestnut. Chestnut is correct. Well done. <laughs> These bonuses are on cities and towns located north of the Arctic Circle. Give the name in each case. Firstly, what is the largest city north of the Arctic Circle? Founded as a supply port in the First World War, its name is thought to derive from a local Sami word meaning edge of the earth. Um, Mamansk or Do you, are you sure about that? No, Spitsbergen. I'm not sure about it. Could it be Spitsbergen? Could be Spitsbergen. Uh, well, hang on. It, it's meant to mean. Uh, it's Sammy for what was it? Sammy for I missed it. <laughs> Sammy for the edge of the universe or something. Yeah. Do you it's know something? Sammy, Charlotte? I don't speak Sammy <laughs> much. Um, I'd say Mamansk. You would you? Mm. You're very confident. Mermansk. No, I'm not. But I think good. Uh, it's more likely than Spitsbergen. And not Svalbard or Spitsbergen. Okay, Mamansk. Mamansk. Mamansk is correct. Yes, well done. What is Sweden's most northerly town? It is in the process of being moved three kilometres to the east to avoid being swallowed up by the world's largest iron ore mine. Is no, no idea. Is Svalbard yeah. even in Sweden? No, that's in Norway. Thanks. Yeah. OK. Um, Come on. Slow. I can't. No. That's, that's Norway. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> then it's definitely okay. not Quickly, that, a Swedish. Yeah. Are the only one I've heard of is Stockholm. Stockholm. Yes, no, well, it's not Stockholm. Stockholm. Well, let's, let's make up a world in. A word, a yeah. Swedish word. Think Go on, Swedish then. Word. Swalborg. <laughs> Swalborg? No, it's not Swalborg, <laughs> it's Karuna. <laughs> oh, honestly. Located on two islands to the west of the Norwegian mainland, what is the world's northernmost university town? 
Oh, that's where um, um, the... Linnaeus was. It's um, Uppsala. Oh, yes, yes. excellent. Go on. Yes. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Uppsala. That's no, Tromsa. Oh. Oh. Ten points for this. Almost wicked in its indifference, and the motto, the gospel of the person who lives upon the work of another. These words appear in 19th century citations in the OED of what doctrine advocating minimal government interference and known by a French New term... College Mendelssohn. Libertarianism? No, you lose five points. Oh, zoot. And known by a French term meaning allow to do. Uh, Reading Dillon. Uh, anarchy? No, it's laissez-faire. Ten points for this. What single letter of the alphabet links the symbol for the voiceless vela fricative in the International Phonetic Alphabet, John Singer Sargent's portrait of the French socialite Virginie Gautreau, and a phenomenon whose discovery led to the award of the first Nobel Prize in Physics? New College Mendelssohn. X. X is correct, yes. You get three bonuses on mathematicians who died in 2020. <laughs> After an English mathematical physicist, what name is given to a sphere, shell or bubble that is a hypothetical concept of creating a solar array around a distant star to maximise energy capture? Ring? Ring? Let's no, no, try. Ring? No, it's Freeman Dyson. Described as Archimedes, Mick Jagger, Salvador Dali and Richard Feynman all rolled into one, which mathematician created the evolution simulator known as the Game of Life? Is it, is it, could it be Feynman? Did Robert Feynman die recently? I have no idea. He's the only sexy mathematician I've ever heard of. OK. I don't even know I if I don't think sex comes I'm... into it, actually. But... <laughs> Jagger, <laughs> come on. Um, Robert, Robert Feynman. No, it was Conway. The method used to set targets in rain-affected one-day cricket matches was created by the statistician Tony Lewis, who died in 2020, and which fellow Lancastrian? I mean, anybody? Any words at all? Yeah, exactly, any two words. Shuttleworth. No, it's nearly right, it's Duckworth. Oh, oh, man! Morally correct. Right, we're going to take a picture around now. For your picture starter, you'll see a map of part of the UK. For ten points, name the national park area that's been highlighted. New College Cook. Glen Corns. Glen who? Glen Corns? No. No. Uh, Reading Barnes. Cairngorms. It is the Cairngorms, you're right. Hello. The Cairngorms are home to the only herd of wild reindeer in the UK, introduced in 1952. For your bonuses, I want you to identify three more areas around the world that are home to significant wild reindeer herds. <laughs> First, this Canadian territory. Uh, any thoughts? Um, no, if it's not Vancouver, I don't know. I want to say Saskatchewan, just for the pleasure of saying it, but... <laughs> no, it's not. No. It's Yukon. Oh. Secondly, name this peninsula. Somewhere in Russia. Where? Bering? Is Bering Straits over there? I don't know. No, the Bering Straits are at the right. Where it's all it? we have at this no. time. No, because the Bering Straits are between America I and Canada. I have no idea. Isn't Bering Straits? No, it's the Tamir Peninsula. And finally, name this archipelago. Archipelago. Um, so that's part of Norway. Didn't I'm, they say Sp it's Spitsbergen? It's I'm pretty Spitsbergen. sure it's on the shipping forecast, but that doesn't help us. Um, what are those Spitsbergen? islands? North at Sarah. Spitsbergen. No, it's the Svalbard area. Oh. Spitsbergen is one of the islands, as far as I recall. Ten points for this. Humulones are a chemical constituent of what herbaceous perennial plant, distinguished by its bitter and aromatic properties? Varieties include Simcoe, Mosaic and Styrian Golding. New College Cook. You? No. Reading Smith. Holly? No, it's hops. Ten points for this. A Boy Called Christmas, The Girl Who Saved Christmas and The Truth Pixie are children's books by which author? His non-fiction works include Notes on a Nervous Planet and Reasons to Stay Alive. Reading Smith. Matt Haig. Matt Haig is correct. Well done. Oh. Well done. Well done. You get a set of bonuses on Christmas music. 
Who was on the throne of Russia when Tchaikovsky's ballet The Nutcracker was first performed? His son, Nicholas II, succeeded him two years later. Well, we're going to say Nicholas I, but it's well, not Nicholas Well, it's better first. than nothing. It is um, better than nothing. Uh, it, no, it's... Peter the... Peter, look at Peter. What do you... It's bound to be one, Nicholas or Peter, I don't know. We're going Peter, Jeremy. Well, you're wrong. It's oh. Alexander the Third. Oh, well, Who was the US president when Bing Crosby first recorded Irving Berlin's song, White Christmas? So is it Roosevelt or Hoover? Was it Hoover before Roosevelt? Let's go for Roosevelt. <laughs> yeah. Roosevelt. What do we think? Yeah. Roosevelt. Go Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Which one? FDR. Uh, FDR is correct, yes. Yeah. Who was the UK Prime Minister when the Spice Girls achieved their third consecutive Christmas number one? It's got to be Tony Blair. So Tony Blair. Blair. Oh, Surely. is it tricky? Oh. Is it? I, what about Brown? It might have been. No, 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 no. no, no. I think it okay. must have been Blair, right? It's either oh. Blair or Major. Yeah. Oh. Their third... Con yeah, because... I think it's going to be Spice Blair. Girls was... Lovely. Yeah, let's... Shall we go? Yeah. Oh. Tony Blair. Tony Blair is correct. <laughs> so, ten points for this. Which novel of 1924 opens with the assertion that there is nothing extraordinary about the fictional city of Chandrapur except for, at 20 miles distance, the Marabar Caves? The author is E.M. New College Mendelssohn. Passage to India. Passage to India is correct. Your bonuses are on pairs of authors who share a given name, for example, Mary Beard and Mary Shelley. In each case, name both people from the descriptions. Firstly, the authors of the early 1990s work The Beauty Myth and the 2016 novel The Power. Um, Naomi. It's Naomi, Naomi, isn't it? Yeah. Naomi. Right, we'll, we'll give you that, Naomi Wolf and Naomi Alderman. But from now on, you're going to give the whole name. Secondly, the authors of Everyday Sexism and Little House on the Prairie. Laura. It's Laura. I'm going to uh, nominate Mendelssohn. Laura Beats and Laura Ingalls Wilder. Correct. And finally, the, the authors of the 1704 treatise Optics and the 1950 collection I, Robot. Isaac. What? Isaac. Oh. Isaac. Isaac, Isaac Asimov, Asimov yeah. and Isaac... Isaac Newton. Go Correct. On. Yay! <laughs> Right, we're going to take a music round now. If your music starter, you'll hear a piece of classical music. Ten points if you can name the composer. New College, Hampton. Handel. No, it's not. You can hear a little more reading if you like. You may Please. not confer. Smith. Bark. It was Bark, yes. Well done. <laughs> According to Clemency Burton Hill's book Year of Wonder, Classical Music for Every Day, Bark's Christmas Oratorio is the piece to listen to on Christmas Day. Your bonuses are three more pieces that Burton Hill recommends be listened to in the run-up to Christmas. Name the composer, please, of each piece. Firstly, this duet from an opera. I always go Verdi. I mean, but is it? It's not Verdi. What do you think, no. ladies? It's not Verdi. Is it? Not Verdi. Sounds like you don't even recognise it. I don't recognise it. No, it's Germanic. Mm. Germanic. But it's not Wagner. No. We're going to say Verdi. Well, you're wrong. It's Engelbert oh. Humperdinck. Secondly, this 20th century carol, not that end. Okay. <laughs> Secondly, Sweet 20th century carol. 20th century. British. 20th century, you just always got Benjamin Briston if it's British. Yes, that's not a bad mm. guess. Britain. No, it's John Rutter. Finally, this piece written as a birthday present for the composer's wife. Sounds very old, Was he married? 
married someone like Elgar. He was definitely married Elgar. Oh, that's good. Elgar? What do you think? Yeah, try it. Elgar. Oh, that's Richard Wagner's Siegfried's Idyll. Oh. <laughs> Ten points for this. Quote, this event is so momentous that historians may one day view it as a landmark in the decline of the British Empire. What event in the world of popular music was described thus by a CBS News reporter on April the 10th, 1970? New College Mendelssohn. The splitting up of the Beatles. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on the 2020 Tour de France. In each case, give the nationality of the rider or riders described. Tade Pogacar and Primoz Roglic, the winner and second place rider, respectively, firstly. I guess they sound like Polish names, but I do not know. Christopher? No. No. Well... My... No. Uh, they're, well, they're in... Are they Czech? Uh... Well, they, they were Taddy or something, and there was Poglitch. Mm. Yeah, OK, go for Poglitch. I don't know, I don't... Yeah. Okay. I don't I just, know. No. Yeah. Polish. No, they're Slovenian. Oh. Secondly, Richie Port, who came third, and Caleb Ewan, who won two individual That's stages. Amazing. Sounds American. Does sound American, doesn't it? What do you think? Michael? Okay, go for that. Yeah. yeah. Good. America. No, they're Australian. Oh. Finally, Sam Bennett, who won the final stage and the green jersey for the points classification. Sam Bennett. Sam Island or America? America's more likely, isn't it? Well, should we say America? It's a bigger place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> do they even do the Tour de France? Well, they must. They surely. must. Okay. I don't know. America. No. He's Irish. Oh, oh, okay. Ten points for this. It's chapter titles including The Problem That Has No Name and The Happy Housewife Heroine, which 1963 book by Betty Friedan is regarded as a significant New College Mendelssohn. The Feminine Mystique. Correct. <laughs> you get three bonuses on a scientific term. From the Latin for thread, what word can denote the infusible conductor of a light bulb? and in botany, the part of the stamen that supports the anther. It's a filament. Filament. I think it's yeah. a filament. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Filament. Filament is correct. In 1907, the General Electric Company introduced a lamp with a filament of what group six metal? It has a melting point of more than 3,000 degrees. Tungsten. tungsten. I'd guess tungsten. Yeah, tungsten. Tungsten is correct. And in biology, finally, the sliding filament model describes the way thick and thin filaments slide relative to one another in which tissue of the human body? Sliding filament. Oh, I, I have no idea. Which tissue? The eye? I'm Ligament. guessing the eye, but I have no idea. I'm making it up. Which tissue of the body? Muscle? Muscle. Muscle is correct. Oh, well done. Well done. <laughs> Right, we're going to take another picture round. For your picture starter, you'll see a painting. For ten points, please name the artist. Uh, Reading Barnes. Turner. Turner is correct. Slave ship or slavers <laughs> throwing overboard the dead and dying. That was in the collection of the Museum of Fine Art in Boston. The museum celebrated its 150th birthday in 2020. Your picture bonuses are three more significant works from its collection. I'd like you to name the artist in each case, please. First, from its American collection. Um, is it Dagon? Yeah, yeah. it's going to be. Yeah, yeah, Dagon. Yeah. What do you think? If it's American, is it going to be Whistler or no, not Sergeant? Oh, Sergeant, I Sergeant. wondered. Sergeant. That was Mary Cassatt. And secondly, from its European collection. Oh, is it Reynolds? Maybe. No, it's. Um... I don't recognise his style. <sighs> okay. Not Reynolds. Letter? No, it's not Tim Letter. No, I don't think so. It's not, not, a, it's not a British artist, though, is it? What do you think? Come on, please. It's going to be Italian. Canaletto? No, it's Panini. And finally, from its Japanese collection, one of the largest outside Japan. <gasps> He's the most famous Japanese yes, artist. Yes, it is. <laughs> I know, it is. But what's his name? <laughs> I don't know. Famous Japanese artist. Edo? Is it Edo? Come on. Edo? No, it's Hokusai. Ten points for this. The centre of a culture that dominated the Aegean in the mid-second millennium BCE, at which ancient city did Sir Arthur Evans lead excavations from 1900? New College Hampton. Knossos. Knossos is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on music. 
Which British performer is known as the god of hellfire from the opening of his 1968 single, Fire? Oh, oh is it Robert Arthur? Arthur uh, Brown? No, 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 no. Who are we talking about? Fire. 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 It's Arthur... Brown. Arthur Brown, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Arthur Brown? Arthur Brown is correct. Brown. Brown was an exponent of what musical sub-genre marked by manic psychedelia, outrageous onstage behaviour and macabre props? I need a two-word rhyming term. Glam rock. It's got a rhyme. Oh, rhyme. Oh, sorry, I missed that one. Um, quick, quick, quick. Um, if we don't know, we just on. skip it. Mash trash. What about that? Something like that, you know. Just pass. Don't know. Make something Shock up. rock. Oh. Never Sometimes heard described that. as the godfather of shock rock, which US artist had a major hit with Schools Out in 1972? Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper is correct. There's no need to buzz Reading. Right, ten points for this. Phenicopter, meaning red feathered, is a poetic name for what large wading bird whose Spanish derived common name roughly conveys this sense? New College Mendelssohn. Flamingo. Flamingo is correct. Your bonuses are on events of 1520. In 1520, King Christian II's massacre of nobles in which Nordic city, later a capital, incited a war of liberation in the country concerned, resulting in the breakup of the Kalmar Union in 1523. Did he say uh, it was a Scandinavian city? Uh, Danzig. It's got to be Oslo, Copenhagen, Copenhagen or Stockholm. Christopher's got an idea. Did he, Danzig, would it be? Did he say Danzig. it was a Scandinavian city? Yes, and it was a ca later a capital. So it has to be Oslo... Oh. Um, What's the capital of Finland? I've never gotten. Come on, it's um, Helsinki. I think it's more like the Oslo, isn't it? Stockholm. Christopher. I'd guess Stockholm, but if if Christopher thinks no, it can't be Danzig if it's not Scandinavia. You want to go? Um... Come on. Os Oslo. Go for it. Oslo. No, it's Stockholm. Oh, Commissioned by the future time. Pope Clement VII <laughs> in 1520, the Florentine Histories is the longest work by which Renaissance thinker? Um. Um. Mm. Well, it's, it's not Machiavelli, it's not Gingini. Come on. Um, it's, not. it's not Vasari, because he was in Lives of the Artists, but you could say Vasari, but I'm sure that's not right. I just don't know. Pico de la Mirandola. Say that. Yes, Christof I'm nominating Christopher. Pico de la Mirandola. No, it's not, it's Machiavelli. <laughs> <laughs> Which explorer commanded the ships that in 1520 became the first to sail from the Atlantic to the Pacific Oceans? And the answer to that was, of course, Magellan. Getting bad luck, 60 points. Never mind. <laughs> you didn't have to do it. <laughs> New College, you're not going to go through to the semi-finals because you're not one of the four highest scoring winning teams. But you won nonetheless, and that's all that counts. Thank you very much for taking part. I hope you can join us next time for the first of the semi-finals, but until then, it's goodbye from Reading University. Bye. Bye. It's goodbye from New College Oxford. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>